back. Look who I have here with me today, Miss Tanya Marie Styles. I bet you don't know who she is yet, but she's about to storm on the scene. Not only is she an up and coming entrepreneur, she's also my daughter. Yeah. Say something to the people, Tanya. Hello, you guys. I am Tanya Marie. Uh, yeah, of course, this is my lovely mother. If you can't tell. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to be here today and bring you guys this mukbang or mukbang or whatever they call it. Hey, you know, we, no matter what we call it, we get ready to get down. So I felt like my baby girl was a little down today, starting her own business and stuff. We were so hateful, you know, some people were just doing too much. And I had to let her know, like, fuck the haters. Okay, block them because that energy, if it's not about some constructive criticism, we don't need it. And it only brings you down, right? Right. So, therefore, I said, why not do this month thing? We're going to do it on Friday. We both are busy, which is a great thing. She's got some hair appointments and I got some meetings. So, let's see what come of that. But for now, we get rid of month thing, this thing out. We're going to talk about being an entrepreneur, just some of the hardships, and then, you know, mother, daughter, and uh, maybe you'll get to know us a little better. We we'll get to know you a little better. Make some comments. Let us know how you feel about some things. Before we get started, you know me. I'm about the food. So I'm going to show you this sauce that I made today. Look at that shit. Ooh, that sauce. That seafood boil sauce. Zoom in, zoom out. Okay, so we got our seafood boil sauce. We got, And you already know how to make that because we've already got the recipe on the actual um, channel. So just go back and look at it if you're ready to eat some seafood boil. Or you can get it from me. Either way, it's that sauce. And um, see here, we got some lemons. And of course, we have an array of seafood. And we'll show it as it goes. You're going to get those great bites and sound bites because we're going to eat. You know, I'm already greedy. You've already seen a couple of my videos. So in saying that, let's dig in. And as we eat, we're going to talk about some stuff and ask each other some questions. And uh, hey, let's go. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm going to let you take the first bite. We're going to put our gloves on. We got our little bags over here. We don't do bibs because, you know, we greedy. Greedy people don't need all of that security. We just need to get into what we're doing and eat it. Yes. All right, so let's put on these gloves and get to eating. How about it? Oh, Tia already has on hers. Please. I'm hungry. Okay. okay. And um, I have not eaten my guests day. always try first. Let me know. Whatever you want to get, dip it. I don't care. Okay. You tell me how. And make sure they hear that first bite. Honey. So I am a corn kind of girl. All right. So I'm going to just dip. Get it in there. Hey, hold up. Let the people see what you dip and how you dip in it. Look at that. You want to get all of that goodness. Oh, I love it. Yeah, all let right. them hear them crunches. Let them hear it. Mmm. Hold up. What are we waiting for? This, this, you sure you, you want? <laughs> My bad. I'm messing with the microphone. I want to make sure y'all hear this. So since I already, you know, was uh, respectful to my guests and let them have some, I think I'm going to start the shrimp because the last time I started with the corn. But hold up. Let me show you a before and after shrimp. This is a before. See that? It's going to be an after. How it tastes? You see, I'm not talking. Oh, that's how it tastes. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. That lemon. Oh, I didn't put lemon on mine. No, lemon makes a difference. I didn't put a lemon on mine. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. So. The first thing I kind of wanted to, you know, talk about in reference to entrepreneurship was that it takes a lot of courage, you know, to go out and say you're going to start something on your own and um, get away from somebody giving you money every two weeks, one week. Uh, once a month, however you get paid, you know? So, anybody who's thinking about being an entrepreneurship, entrepreneur, anybody who is just starting to entrepreneur, and anybody who has been there not long enough to be comfortable, but still kind of like, uh, hang in there. It's worth it. What do you think, Tanya? 
So here are my thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. If you are a person who wants to do your own business, make sure mm -hmm. the key is to really believe in yourself despite anybody else and love yourself enough to know you're going to get criticized. You're going to have people who just don't like your stuff or whatever you're doing. But one, self-care and self-love and believing in yourself is the main key before you even get into starting. Because if you can't do those things first, you're, you're not going to finish. Or you're not going to want to see it go finish. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to add one more thing to that though, Tanya. Like, you need a good support team. You need a good bunch of people who ride for you, who are going to put your product out there, who are going give you that extra push to take the chance and, and tell you they believe in you because honestly if you out there a man on the island it's really kind of hard you know to be an entrepreneur every day and the other thing you're gonna have to be okay with this room mm. just hearing mm -hmm. no mm. honey you are gonna get so many people that tell you no before they tell you yes say that again and I always tell people, if you're not comfortable with this here no 10 times, and you already go at the first no, you don't need to be in business. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's not really the no, and it should never hurt your feelings. It should be the question after no. It should be, well, why was it no? When you learn why that person told you, yo, you can turn it into a yes. And that is the true heart of an entrepreneur, a hustler, or somebody who's driven and has a passion. But if you don't have a passion for what you're doing and what you're going in business for, you don't need to do it. If you think you're going in business just for the money, so many people got great careers. Look at that. What did that crab mean? Got great careers, but they don't love their work. So they either, you know, just going through the day to day or they get tired and they just quit. Um, I have an example of how I could have quit, but I didn't. And I asked for help and I asked the reason why. So I did someone's hair and I did a ponytail. And mind you, I'm not um, into weaving and wigs and stuff like that. I'm into natural locks and stuff like that. She so, did my hair. You like it? Cute, cute. I know. <laughs> Don't hate. So, um,. Mm. So, mm. a girl, you know, I posted the picture and a girl commented uh, that it didn't look right. She didn't like it. So, I talked to a hairstylist the very next day and asked, what did I do wrong? And I got tips. And from those tips, I took them and I got better. You have to know that when you're starting out on something, you're not the best. There are other people out there that are doing the same thing that you're doing, and you have to be willing to learn. Well, one thing you want to let them know, too, is that you're in the process of going to school for these things, so you're still, like, being trained and things of that nature, so you're still not sharp for your skills, but to go out there and put your skill set out there so people can give you feedback and continue to go to school and get and learn your trade, that's huge. And well, that's one thing I really am proud of you about, because it takes a lot to put yourself out there, and I know from young... You know, you always was concerned with other people think, but look at you now. Like, you doing it, boo. Yes. All right, proud of you. Thank you. Um, but I'm learning this because not every entrepreneur can go to school for what they want to do. And not everybody can go to school for their craft. It's just naturally given or it's something that they learned over time. So since there's no school, since there may not be a school for what you want to do, look for a mentor. Look for somebody. That's true. That's true. Because there's some trades that you're not going to be able to go to school and get no, nothing on paper. And a good example like YouTube. of that is a tattoo artist. You're going to have to go find somebody, convince them to be an apprenticeship. Well, you go to school for photography. It's just that you're not going to. Well, you go to school for photography to learn the basics, and then you still have to have an eye, you know, and, and have that creative juices. But, you know, 
a good example is a tattoo artist. There's no school for tattooing. You have to find somebody to um, to say that you're good enough for them to want to even make you an apprentice. You know, to um, learn under them, and you have to be motivated because. Um, tattoo apprenticeships from the last time I checked on it, not for my personal self, because that's not my passion, but in general, it's at least a year. Most tattoo artists are under apprenticeship for maybe from a year to three years before they say, okay, you're good enough to actually be a tattoo artist, go get your license and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, so any tattoo artists want to comment, but I don't know if there's a certain amount of hours you have to complete or whatever. It's definitely not my thing. But I really got respect for, you know, tattoo artists. We both have tattoos, so I there's do. a passion there. But, um, you know, there was a good point about you can't go to school to learn everything. But another thing is um, knowing exactly what you want to do. Mm-hmm. That's uh, a before shrimp. Knowing exactly what you want to do and sticking to it. Yeah. And um, I always tell people, like, if, and I just kind of touched on it. If your passion isn't driving you to do what you're doing, you're, you're not necessarily, look at that shrimp. You're not necessarily going to do it. Here are some key things to notice that you're passionate about something. All you want to do is do it. All you think about is doing it. And all, you'll stay up late nights trying to do something you love. You'll lose sleep over trying to do something you love. You'll lose money over trying to do something you love. And guess what? You'll also stop caring what people say when you're doing something you love. Well, haters now, people that I always tell you, like, you got to uh, seek the um, source of the, you know, comment or the information. If it's somebody who's an expert in the field, yeah, take it for critique and get better and listen to what they're saying. But if you some troll online or some hater down the street mad because you couldn't do the same or mad because you don't, you know, want to see that person succeed, then stop your seven seats because nobody is listening to that mess who has any bit of sense to say that you're somebody who's going to, you know, make or break them. Seriously. And, um, you ever heard the saying, mind the business that pays you? Hey, That's you ever I'm heard my saying? If you don't, and I want y'all to listen to this carefully, let this resonate. If you don't shit what I eat, you don't matter. And I'm not saying personally, but business-wise, you don't matter. Because if you're not the reason why I'm making my money, nothing you say can bother me. You know, I'm going to get my bags, you And learn how to not mix business with person. Yeah. And if you are going to do it, make sure that person has a business or is in some type of business or knows what it takes to have a business and understands how to put their feelings and ego aside. And don't just go, somebody tell you, oh, I got this going on, I got, don't just go jump and be like, okay, and invest in stuff. Like, don't go put your money without researching what you put your money into or the credibility of the person behind. One one thing I want to say, I've been working for my mom since I was probably, what, six years old? No. Six, I was filing your papers at Don't tell that shit, IRS, that shit didn't. Not like, no! Not filing her papers, but like, Like if she would have a customer and she needed the paper to go be filed away, I would be filing. I no, I would say about 12 or 13, not 6. 12 or 13. Mm-hmm. But she started teaching me how to do hair at 6 and 7. Yeah, that's true. And that's cooking true. it at 6 and 7. So mm-hmm. it's like me and my mom never really mixed the business with the personal. I don't think we've ever really had an argument over business versus personal. Well, I have to say this. Remember that incident in the sense of when we were doing the, um, we had that event um, in uh, Concord, Mm -hmm. that event, and then I was letting you know, because like sometimes too, this is a point about entrepreneurship and working with family. We get comfortable with who we are on a personal level, right? And so when it comes to business, sometimes we don't take it as serious. So we had a little incident where I had to let her know that you, I'm your mom, but at the same time, I'm your boss. So when we're on the clock, I'm your boss, and you definitely need to make sure that you're here and you can do what you need to do. So once you understood that, we never had another problem with it. But you I know, I feel like she needs to explain that better. Okay, so we were at the event. My significant other was there, and I was mostly with my significant other than I was focused on the event. And that's what she's trying to say. But she just basically gave like this <laughs> because I ain't trying to put the business out there. You know what I'm saying? Look at my lobster. Look at this shit. Ooh. 
Yes. Watch this. That was the before, you know. And this will be the after. But, um. Boom. And then after I take it out the shell, I'm going to dip it again. So check it. Yeah. But, um, I think we, you know, you understood what I was coming from and we got past that point. And what I didn't do was, you know, make a whole scene at the event. I waited till afterwards in a professional manner and had a meeting, additional meeting, and then we discussed it. So see something I know about my mom is I know when she feels some type of way. <laughs> so I knew she was going to say something about it. I think I brought it up before you said something about mm -hmm. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I mean, you didn't, but but I knew she was. You wasn't it. upset when I said. It. I think you kind of knew. Yeah. That was a problem, but again, I'm a professional of nothing else when I'm about my business, so I don't allow things to like you know overshadow that because that gives you a bad name. And if you want to continue to get business, you got to be professional at all times in business, um, and you got to know your audience, you know, because like um, I infuse. I'm a chef. I do edibles. I do, you know, things of that nature. So you may be in a hip hop situation. You may be in a corporate situation. You may be, you know, in the street. You got to know how to handle your business at all times and make your customers feel comfortable. And if you say you do something, you carry yourself as such. So, like, I do hair, but my hair's not done. My mom does my hair. But my hair's not done because I just got it done. You can't do locks over and over again. But I wear makeup and I do makeup. And I also make products for my skin and for skin in general to keep my face looking dewy and glowy and nice. As you can see, it looks nice. And the key to um, that is always be ready to promote yourself. Always look ready to promote yourself. Always come ready to promote yourself. Oh, I'm listening. I'm listening. So My that, bad. So that, um, because I read something yesterday and it said a lion never has to tell you they're a lion. So if you do something, you shouldn't really have to explain to people what you do. Because they should already know based off of how you look and how you carry yourself. Well, of course, I, you know, you're going to have to explain to them your business. Like, you know, some people, what they do, taxes, you're not going to be walking around with a calculator talking about something. I'm an accountant, you know. They're going to have a pen. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in this, to the, her point, you know, you definitely want to have some type or of business Or they're going to be dressed car. nice in some type of suit or something. Nah. Not all the time, babe. I know accountants that, you know. Uh, chill, like pretty much chill. I think it's time for a love change before I put this lobster in my mouth, though, because I'm, woo, look at this. I can't relate. Okay. Um, but nah, you don't have to have something on hand to always represent yourself, whether it be a business card, um, whether it be your uh, social media presence where you can go ahead and tell them to just, you know, log on and follow you and they follow you on the spot. But always be ready, you know. They always talk about that elevated speech, that 30 second elevated speech telling somebody who you are. But ask, I, I have a new saying. I don't know. I've never heard anybody saying, but this is what I had to explain to um, one of my homeboys and potential business partners. Um, I can't get you know, Oh, I, I'll tear it down for you, boo. As a matter of fact, you go ahead and have this one. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Enjoy that lobster. Thank you. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, I was telling him. You know how you do when you're going to pick up somebody, you know, like you like somebody and you're going to approach them and you're going to, you know, what are you going to get? What are you going to tell them? And I said, it's it's called a pickup line because, right. oh, wait, what are we waiting for? We are now gathered here today uh -oh. to appreciate this lobster. Ooh. Is it perfect lobster or not? Talk to me now. Let the people know what we got going on. See, I told you, I don't need all of those damn tools to get Perfect. into. I'll snap into a Slim Jim. You hear me? I'm African, too. But um, that pickup line, let me get back to that. That's what I'm talking about. You know, male or female, when you're interested in a person, you put that, you put your thoughts together, and when you're, you know, bold or you have the confidence to approach somebody, you got your line together before you give it to them to make sure, you know, they're going to give you that number or y'all going to have that date or whatever. So I told them straight up, you got to have you a pickup line to pick up some damn customers. 
And I have a pickup line. You know, it's not important in this moment exactly what my pickup line is, but it works. And most importantly, what I try to do in my pickup line is be relatable. And, and that's how truly you want to gain your customers. You want to have a connection on some basis to make them understand. So if I'm in a hospital or let's say I'm just walking in the mall and there's a lady like, oh my gosh, my back hurts. And I'm like, man, I am so sorry, back hurts. I feel you. I feel that pain too. Um, I have, you know, degenerative discs and I do. That's not a lot. You know, so like I said, be relatable. I said, but I use the CBD salt that I, I uh, make to ease the pain. And as we talked about the CBD salt earlier, my daughter was in the kitchen. She was helping me and her um, hand started hurting. So tell, tell the people about that experience. In a minute, she'll tell right after screen. <laughs> so, I'm a makeup artist and I do hair, but this is mostly from hair. I don't know if I've developed some early arthritis or developed some joint issues, but my hands definitely do cramp up a lot and hurt like heck. If you've ever had that issue, you know how bad it hurts. So, um, basically, I was trying to squeeze the lemon and I couldn't squeeze the lemon. So my mom was like, go put some of this off on your hand. I think it was like, what, about two minutes later and I was like, okay, you're on to something. My hand released the cramp, it, it don't hurt. It's this hand right here, it does not hurt. And I'm not one to hype up something if I truly haven't experienced it. My mom started using CBD with me, what, about six months ago now? Mm -hmm. And it's because I suffer from horrible period cramps. So and about a year ago then. Yeah, a year ago. About a year ago. A year ago. Because um, I suffer from horrible, per horrible period cramps. And um, one day I was cramping really bad. And she came in my room. And she just was like, here you go. She told me to lift my tongue up and she stuck something under my tongue. That was the CBD oil, that OG, that, you know, that real, real. Within like five seconds, I stopped cramping. And, True shit. Um, yeah, I have anxiety issues. Like, I was nervous at the beginning of this video. I was extremely nervous. But look at her now. That's why I was quiet. There's also CBD in here, so maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... I I used to smoke uh, THC and I used to use all that stuff, but I feel like the psychoactive part of it is not for me. I already have anxiety and PTSD, and I feel like THC heightens that for me. And so when I don't do C when I don't do THC and I do the CBD because I have tried THC since I started CBD, and it was still the same effect of me feeling like. Uh, very panicky and very uh uh what do you call it paranoid so now being back and getting back to the whole cbd part of it is perfect because i feel right now i feel very relaxed i feel very calm my head space is here you know what i'm saying and that's really a thing for me because i can easily just get in my head and get negative in my head. So, yeah, I do appreciate this today because I needed this. You're quite welcome, daughter. And, you know, that's why I say you need a strong support team. Your support team needs to know you to the point, like, man, she needs to lift up. You know what I'm saying? She needs to pick me up. Because I saw that, like, you know, um, she's doing her thing now with videos and doing Instagram posts and stuff. And, and, of course, you have people from your past who don't believe you're actually doing this thing and, and they don't like you. They don't want you to do any better than them. And then you have people who just mad. Today, Tuesday, well, I'm sorry, today, Wednesday, I'm just mad at the world. So I'm going to attack anybody I see online. I'm a troll. Let me say this. You, know, you ever had a book you really can't get to? It won't come out. You ever had a booger you can't really get to? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm that booger. Oh. You cannot pick at me. It yeah. won't bother me. Yeah. It won't. It won't do anything to me. I probably, I might get upset, I might get frustrated, but baby, best believe I'm not going to cry over it. I'm not going to shed no tears over you and your, where you're at, because I know where I'm going and I know where I'm at. So, well, I can say this. Let me say this to your point. 
I know. And thank God, because between CBD and therapy, I am definitely recovering my PTSD and finding coping skills, and I'm doing great. But when I was in that place, when I was deep into my mental illness, it affected my kids, it affected everybody and anything around me. So every little thing was moving me. Somebody say something that affect me, I get offended. You know, I may not get sad, I may not get depressed, but I certainly would lash out. And um, I'm past that point. And I'm thank God that I'm such in a better place. And that's why I said, I don't just take my stuff. I, I mean, I don't just sell this stuff because I know the industry has money in it. I believe in these products because I'm a product of my own product, you know, couldn't say it any better way. So the thing about it is when I'm out here and I'm telling you, oh, you need to try this. You know, I've tried every product I have on the market. And right now to date, I think I have about 45 products on the market and all have been done research and development. I have some things in research and development now, but I say that to say from topical, medicinal and edibles, you know, Check me out if you have some issues. Come have a private conversation with me. We'll find out what you really need to make your life better. But um, getting back into this entrepreneurship is something else I want to say in reference to, you know, getting money and stuff like that. I've been, this is not my first business. Taz, cut it out. And I don't know, I may leave that part in because, you know, she she been she been on one because she wants that attention. But anyway, um, what was I saying? Pass in her mess. <clears throat> mm. I guess she feeling it too. No. Uh, you were talking about how, dang, I really did forget. It's all good. But I'm going to say this in reference to entrepreneurship. Oh, yeah, making your money. So when you start now, I used to have a sneaker boutique. I've experienced being the only person in the building, no one coming. You know what I'm saying? And I started that from scratch. Kicks of Blades, Nigga Boutique used to be on North Tryon Street. And what's amazing is when I decided to leave that industry alone and leave that business alone, it wasn't on a negative tip. It was just for liability reasons. Somebody broke into my it was store. Negative. Well, no, not on my part, but on the part of the community. Yeah. You know, there wasn't people, you know, they sneakers. Some are rare. Uh, you can't ever get them again. And, you know, people want to break in and steal your your stuff. And then I didn't want to take that risk. I, I have a life to live. I love my life. I love to be here for my children, the grandkids to come. So in saying that, I let that go. And, um, that was a business that taught me from ground up because I built it. You know what I'm saying? With my kids helping me, my nephew, with some other people on staff. I mean, we had nothing, and we started with something. I mean, and we ended with a lot of something. To say we started that business with horseshoe boxes, a camera, and uh, let's do it. Oh yeah, you you remember? This is literally we went to the first sneaker show, and I had four of my sneakers that I I sold them within an hour, and that money came, and that's what I started my whole business with, and started flipping it from there. We literally came up with the name the same day. We came up with the slogan with the same, like, it just seemed for us as a family, like this was fit for us mm -hmm. in our journey for us, you mm -hmm. know? And it was really my brother's idea to go to the sneaker show. Yeah, and, it was. Um, honestly, he wanted to do it, but then he was kind of nervous. Like, my son, he's so smart, but he's not one to really be in front of the, the camera. He's not he's shy. He, he's shy, but then he's not. Like, he's shy. But at times, he doesn't want to be that person talking, but he's shy. He did really well, you know, in selling sneakers. He's shy until he feels comfortable. Like, yeah, basically. I'm usually the one who does most of the talking. Yeah, and she's one of my, no, nah, she is the top salesperson because she's really good at sales. And that's one thing I've always told her. So I know who to take with me when it's time to go to those difficult places and, um, you know, I'm kudos to both of you know my kids and, and, and I'm thankful you know for helping me with the kicks of blades and now that I started can of fusion you know I learned a lot from kicks of blades fall fails say hearing those you know to um being able now for people to call me up and be like that uh-uh, I'm full. <laughs> oh, I've been full for right. a little minute. <laughs> I told I told it looked like a little bit. It was um, a lot in the end. That right? big potato and I was like, mm-mm. I'm done. Yeah, so 
what I was saying in the in the point we made about the um, shoes and just having a little bit and it turned into a lot. And I was telling my daughter this other day, people and entrepreneurs normally don't have a lot of money or none. You have to find creative ways to get the things you need. So and, and, and you may have to volunteer services. You may have to give shit away for free. Um, you know what I'm saying? But make those connections. Go to trade shows. Go to um, places where it's industry people. And you can meet industry people so that you can be able to learn more from them or to, you know, get things that you may need, whether it be borrow, rent, uh, lend, whatever the case may be. Uh, you want to start formulating a network. So with Can of Fusion, before I even went and got my license, I started going to industry shows and industry meetings and stuff and, and building a network. So when I came out the gate in June, I started like... In um, 2017, about October, I went to my first cannabis industry type thing to find out. Excuse me. And it was Women of Sativa. Oh, I'm sorry. Women Grow. And they were here. <coughs> <coughs> Woo! That's the spice. Right, right there. I went down the wrong way. That felt right there. <laughs> but um, when I went to this meeting... <coughs> I saw, I made a lot of connections that first meeting. And then the next thing you know, I was, you know, doing my thing and had my client base. Somebody talked to somebody and I presented. We did the, the show in um, Raleigh. Mm -hmm. We, or Durham. Fun. In Durham. Like, it we were Raleigh. a feature. It was Durham because it was born. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> it was Durham. Yeah. It was Durham. Durham. No, Love but Raleigh, there. Raleigh is too. But not as bad as. Oh, okay. I'm not saying this. Let me, let me <laughs> shout out to Durham. It's we love y'all. We love y'all. But the thing is, y'all got to find some stuff to, to do. do. <laughs> like, we in a hotel. We looking around. Ain't, ain't nobody, nobody in the streets. It's a Friday, it. Saturday. It's like, what y'all doing? Ain't nobody doing Maybe it's just because of where we were. But I Y'all need some CBD? Is that what it is, living it up? I, I mean, still so. hear people, you know, but we do live in the South. And not everybody's like. Yeah, because Charlotte is booming. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to lie. Charlotte is not every city in the South. There's a lot of things we got going on here from the LGBT community and to, you know, the community itself coming together. Back to that. Um, I also want, want to make the statement of. People know when to stop giving for free and know when to give and when to stop giving for free. And or know, no that all, too. know that all money is not good money. Amen. Because um, I do everything out of my home. And, you know, you don't want people to come into your home and destroy your home and then only pay you halfway or don't pay you all the way and then leave and then look at you like you're stupid because, hey, you invited me into your home. So you want to be careful of who you uh, do business with. And like she said, nobody starting out in an entrepreneurship has enough money to do what they're doing. I literally... And some do. Some do. Some get along. They good. Like, you know, somebody who I will not call president said he started with as minimal as a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay. But go ahead. He started with a minimum of what? His daddy gave him Ooh, a... if I had a million dollars, do you know how rich I would be? His daddy gave him a, a mediocre million, million to just start. a little bit. Just mm. a little something. Fine. Okay. But um, I, I started out my hair business. Uh, well, my boyfriend actually started me out with my hair business. He pay, paid for most of my supplies. I would book the clients and he would pay for most of my supplies. So technically I only had $10 to my name when I really started my hair business. Makeup, everybody in my family knew that I loved makeup. So I would get gift cards. My mom's definitely funded my makeup. I've, um, but as far as myself, I will spend a buck, a, a good amount of money. I've probably over the years, I've been doing my makeup since I was 15. So I've probably spent like over a thousand dollars on my makeup. Well, let me say such a good point you just made, because the thing too, as far as entrepreneurship is you're not going to have the money. So go to the people who are your support system and ask them for loans or ask them, you know, to just give, oh, yeah, donate. Yeah. 
you know, if they believe in you, that's the way to do it. And then those are the people you support seeing you, you know, do a free hair, do here, do. But the people, and trust me, being in business alone, I got some people right now holding on to my shit, telling me I didn't pick it up when I know they got it right at their house, but they will remain nameless. Then, you know, you got a group of people who always want a discount, always want to, no, those are not your support team and you cut them, you cut them. As soon as you see somebody, because it's okay to give people stuff, but hey, if you're not tagging me, if you're not coming to my spot and, and dropping some money, if you're not sending people over, you know what I'm saying? You're not my support. You're a damn troll. You're a, a grubber. You're a moocher, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, that ain't no support. And don't let anybody think that. You and know, don't let people manipulate you. Because, man, it's so many people who try to manipulate people who are doing something just because they want clout. A lot of people out here want clout nowadays. And I don't understand why. People will be like, ooh, girl, we used to rock back in the day. We friends. We do that. No, honey, I don't even know your name. You don't even know my middle name. You don't even know where I grew up. You don't know nothing about me. But we so-called friends, we so-called love each other. Honey, don't lie to yourself. And that's when people see you start to get more of a following. When people see you start to do different things or become something. Then they want to like, then that's when they want to hop on and be like, Ooh, sis, what's up? I miss you, girl. What happened? What? Who are you? If you don't love me at my worst, don't come around at my best. I'm good. Yeah. How about that? And you got to be careful who you call friends because my homegirls post everything that I post. My homegirl even made a whole page for me. And shout out to you, girl. I love you. To promote me. No, I, hmm? I wouldn't say anybody's name unless I asked. Oh, okay, um, true, true. To promote me, and I appreciate that because my friends know, like, just in this year alone, how much I've struggled. And when we can't, we can get even get into years before that how much I struggled. But you know, I've always had this fight and this ambition to do this. So now that I'm actually doing it, it feels so great. Like I'm so much more happier than I've ever been in life. And I appreciate everybody around me who supports me because they keep me going. They keep me pushing. Like, they know when I need a time time to, like, just woosah. Today, I need it. I've been on my phone for three weeks straight. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's not like I'm just on social media. Because one thing, don't watch people do what you want to do and continue to say, I want to do what I want to do. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Don't do that. Because I, I was sitting on, what? YouTube for years, watching people on YouTube saying I wanted to do YouTube, sitting on Instagram for years, seeing girls post makeup videos saying that I wanted to do it. And now I'm finally do it, doing it. So that's the only reason I'm on social media now. And I always and wanted to, to be your, like that. To your point, you know, and, and that's why I, both of my kids, I always tell them, like, do what you want to do. I don't give a damn if you're the, a clown, you want to be the garbage man, whatever, but be the best at whatever you do. So in saying that, in, in reference to just, you know, social media just make sure that you know when you're out there putting yourself out there there's going to be criticism there's going to be people who come at you in a negative way but you keep pushing because like i said at the end of the day what don't kill you make you stronger mm -hmm. and the thing about um what i'm going to do in the, the comments and i'm sorry in the description is i'm going to give you guys some um resources that are free and that's another thing a lot of people get so scared of entrepreneurship because they don't know if they have anybody they can talk to or what all they need one great resource that is nationwide here in the u.s and i don't know it may be something compatible in different uh countries but here this is for the u.s uh, is score score is a small business part of the small business administration and what they do is they mentor um entrepreneurs so whatever you want to go into, even if you haven't started, you're thinking about it, you can go to score. If you have your business plan, you go to score. And then let's talk about business plan right quick. A business plan, everyone should have one. Everyone should absolutely have one, at least for three to five years um, going down the road. A business plan is like your roadmap of how you're going to run your business and what you foresee in the future. The thing is about a business plan, it's, you know, something that you can edit. It's something that you can go back to and switch up if you see new avenues, new target markets or whatever. It depends on what your business is. No, I promise you, every it's single your business. business itself, because some people are just, uh, what do you call those people? Public. Uh, Relations? No. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about. No, tell me something. It's the famous people who are just like public figures. Okay. So, so how do they write a business plan for themselves? That's a good question. So as a public figure, how do you get to be a public figure? It's something that you have to do initially, right, for people to want to pay attention to you. So I'm not saying that everybody in business has a business plan, but people who are serious and want future growth have a business plan. So a public figure may have gotten famous from making speeches, may have gotten famous from, you know, being a basketball player or whatever. But guess what? Now they move to something else. So either they have a management team that kind of takes care of their business, but still. That's what I was going to ask next. Who, who do you believe should be writing this business plan? Because honestly, I don't want to sit down and write a business plan. I don't even know where to start. And I've tried to write a business plan. You know this. That's a good question. You go to score. That's one place you can go. And there's other resources that you can go. And I'm like I said, I'm going to put some resources down in the description because I'm serious. Like, you know, I don't want people thinking that you have to be just committed to a nine to five because you don't. But I also want you to go out there with the confidence that if you're put, uh, taking a step out there, if you got a family feed or whatever, that you have some resources in your pocket so that you can have a support team. You know what I'm saying? And start from there. Don't give up your dreams, your goals and your passions just because you think that financially you're not going to be able to make it or nobody is going to want to buy what you're selling. You'd be surprised what people need. If there's a, a supply, then it meets demand then that's where business succeeds. And another thing, she's not saying don't have a nine to five at all. This is what I, I'm doing. Okay, so right now I stay on my own. I live in my own apartment and I have a pet. So that's also a financial thing. And then I have a significant other. So it's like, those are financial things that take away from myself and take away sometimes from my business. So I have a nine to five or I'm getting a nine to five because guess what? I still can fund my business, but I have other means of income. It's always good to have different streams of income. A person should always have at least three streams of income so they can be financially stable, be able to save and be able to fund whatever they want to do and still have some money on the side. Right now, I have three means of income because... I have to take care of my family. Not only have, do I have to take care of my family, I have to take care of myself. And I have to fund a business. And being an entrepreneur, you have to be willing to fund what you want to do. You can't think, nothing in this world is free. Nobody's gonna just hand it to you and say, here you go, here's a business, here's your business plan, here you go, just take off. Nobody's gonna do that. If you truly want to do it, you have to lose some sleep over it. You have to know that you're gonna be frustrated in it. You're going to lose some tears over it. You have to be willing to just go through the motions and treat it like it's a baby. A business is a baby. So let me let me get in here right quick because um, we've been, you know, rambling on. Not rambling. We've been giving some good information because she has. But we don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, and Tanya, too, will put her information into the uh, description as well as she will let you know um, how to find her and any resources she may have in reference to being an entrepreneur in business. But what I do want to say too on the parent side, like my daughter is 20 and she's doing her own thing. So as a parent, I don't approve of her, you know, living with her boyfriend, but that's her choice. And so because she is independent, she's not coming to me for nothing and she's holding down her own. I have to respect her decision and support her in any way I can. So us parents, especially us old school thinkers like myself, we have to find new ways to love our kids to make sure that they know we support them, you know, and to guide them in the right way so they don't make, you know, bad decisions. So in the sense of saying that, Tanya, keep it, I mean, good job. Keep keep pushing. Don't let, and that's what this mug name was today, to encourage you to keep pushing. Entrepreneurship is not easy, but there is definitely, you know, um, joy in it and there's definitely learning in it and there's going to be more haters and more, more trolls now you understand keep it moving block them don't even let that stress you and learn from those who have something professional or intelligent to say because those are the people who are going to drive you to do better drive you to do more so in saying all of that I don't know maybe she'll let me add her song that she's in the studio working on to this mukbang, which would be freaking awesome. So you can hear that eclectic voice that, you know, has been waiting to come out for so, so long. Um, but 
say, okay, this is her last thing. We're going to wrap it up. Okay. My mom always told me to let my haters be my motivators, and that's what I'm doing. And that's all I have to say. All right. So entrepreneurship is not a bad thing. Don't be scared of it. And if you have a great idea, share it with the world because that's how we make the world a better place. I don't want to be a Michael Jackson song or nothing, but make the world a better place. Just you and me. No, I don't sing. I was just pretending. But you know what? Stay medicated. You know how I do. Let's go. See you soon. Love you, YouTube. Bye. Hey, how was the mukbang? Perfect. You sure? Oh, yeah. It's all gone. Like, we ate out everything. Girl. What was the best? Lobster, shrimp, crab? I'm a corn kind of girl. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It was the corn. And she was all this. Is the corn right? Whatever. But we're going to get out of here. Stop holding you up. Remember, hit that notification so you can see the next. Oh, no. That notification. Hit that notification so you can see the next thing we have coming before anybody else does. Comment, subscribe, like. Tell a friend. You know what I'm saying? Let's build it up. Let's get these entrepreneurs support. You know? Duh. All right. See you guys soon. And we out.